Hello, and thank you for watching the Space Monkeys podcast. If you're following our daily news show, you'll know that we're in Thailand for the Sub-Zero conference. And if you're not watching that show, I think you'd really, really like it. The fascinating opportunity about Polkadot is that it has the ability to upgrade like software. No hard forks, no middlemen deciding what's next. So once or twice a year, the top builders and developers of the Polkadot ecosystem get together in a common place to discuss the room for improvement of the Polkadot protocol and how to evolve it to the next version on the way to Polkadot 2.0. For today's Space Monkeys, we got a chance to speak to the 10 least jet-lagged individuals who've already arrived at the conference about where they see room for improvement in the Polkadot software and what they would do to change things. Let's take a look. Good luck and Godspeed. I'm looking at ecosystem agents, I'm looking at execution, and I think if you look at Polkadot, we have some of the best ecosystem agents out of any ecosystem, and it is what it is. We have a collection of people who can pick together a few people who are so interconnected, form a working group and get things moving really quickly. The things I'd like to encourage would be the taking initiatives and incentives to these agents. Get something moving, get on the sense of like where we can, oh, this is a problem, let's solve it. Let's not plan too much, let's get the group together, chat shit for a bit, get a plan, quick plan sorted, few drafts and get going. And I think that's the best way forward. And you know, if there's no major risks, let's take action and do it. I don't see why we should hold up. See, the thing that I'm working on is core time. Power chains are trying to get started in the ecosystem. There's quite a high barrier to entry with the auction model. They've got to auction for a slot, raise money through crowd, lo crowd loans. The slots that they're bidding for can be two years long. So they've got all of this core time, but they just don't know what to do with it. So with core time, you can buy what you need and even resell what you don't use of what you've bought. It's a paradigm shift in, instead of asking people to back you, you're asking people to actually pay you so you can pay for block space. So I think that there's gonna be a big shift in the way that parachains activities are monetized. After core time, we'll see a lot more uh, smaller projects, more projects that are trying to achieve things, but don't kind of look in and think, oh God, the barrier to entry here is so crazy that I don't know where to start. With on-demand core time, you can just buy a block. You can do that anytime you want to. You could do like a runtime upgrade, buy a few blocks, execute the upgrade and try your new code. It really represents a tiny investment. Whereas you're not having this machine churning out blocks every six seconds forever. I think that would be the, the biggest change. Entry barriers, uh, they're still very high. And I believe that the cost for launching new projects, both for operational costs and the knowledge required to enter are still quite high and uh, that difficults the entry for more diversity and people that has less, ex is less experience either in blockchain or in computer science and programming. It's a hard one but that's why we are all here, great minds and um, community builders of Polkadot to discuss how can we build a better easy to access technology, hopefully would enable in the future the possibility to, let's say, launch new chains, new projects on Polkadot for less than $500 in a hackathon, in less than 48 hours, we should be able to build the tooling for that. I think one area that we could change in Polkadot to like improve the user experience is a concept that Joe brought up recently around unified accounts. I think one of the biggest issues in Polkadot, well, an issue in Polkadot is every chain having their own wallet address. And I think for new users coming into the ecosystem, especially people that uh, have come from Ethereum or Solana or, or other ecosystems, it's a bit of a weird experience. Joe has posted a forum post around uh, this concept of creating like a unified account which is essentially uh, just having one single account for all chains. I think that it would have a pretty big improvement on user experience. Uh, the only thing we need to kind of tackle and work out is like the central exchange, it misplaces the funds, or there's kind of issues there. So I think like that's probably the biggest thing to work out with having a unified account. But other than that, I think it would be a massive improvement for the ecosystem. One of the biggest pain points in the Polkadot ecosystem would be identifying what tribe uh, various actors in the ecosystem fit into, whether they want to engage in open gov to a certain extent, whether they want to be interacting with NFTs, um, core time, whatever their understanding is, an overall guidance um, to, to identify what kind of tribe based in, on their on-chain behavior or, or background that they 
to funnel them into um, a, a nurturing environment. You could do a command line tool so people can understand how block space or, or core time works. But then other people might like clicking buttons uh, in their browser or on their mobile device using one of the, the tools that we've got available in the ecosystem, one of the wallets. Some sort of standardized UX to identifying how the people from outside the ecosystem would onboard into the ecosystem and identifying what tribe or or belief system or like activities that, that they want to get involved in. I think the biggest area of improvement is that we're not having a collective strategy yet about how to move forward, especially when it comes to the treasury. The treasury is really passive, so people are coming, they're making a proposal and then the treasury decides yes or no. It's very passive, we have to wait for proposals to come in. And so what we should do instead is come up with a, with, with a whole range, a full framework of what we want to do, what Polkadot should achieve to become the best place to build Web3. This is the strategy we, we should come up with. Something that I would really like to improve is that when someone goes to a hackathon, they should be able to go from zero to a nice proof of concept within like one day or two. And today is much, much more complicated than that. So something that we are working on at this moment is trying to improve the development life cycle by using a tool that lets you go from kind of like building to deploying in, in a very short time so people can concentrate on the use cases rather than on the technicalities. One improvement would be to have a proxy account support that exists across multiple chains. It's like giving another account permissions to sign stuff on behalf of you. Currently you can set up like a proxy relationship between two accounts. Let's say you have like a pure proxy and then you give it an any proxy to control that from. But then that kind of relationship between the two accounts exists on only the network you set it up on. And so you can't kind of mirror that relationship on a different chain really easily. You have to set it up again and it's a it's a big pain. You know, we should be able to set it up on like one proxy chain and that exists across all the parachains. Don't know if it's possible, but maybe you could say set up your proxy relationship on that chain. Uh, and I don't know anything about this, but I've heard you might be able to use a state proof uh, to like basically verify that the relationship exists there. Uh, so then on your chain, you can be like, okay, I can see that this account has permission to sign on behalf of this other one and then uh, inherit that kind of relationship and uh, execute the proxy transaction on your own chain. The one pain point, the one area would certainly be marketing. I mean, I know a lot of things are happening lately, but it's, I think it's just the tip of the iceberg and we have to kind of hit to the main area or basically the main strategy, how to kind of explore it going forward. The one guy who kind of kicked it off, Gioro, hats off to him. I don't think so we would have had these kind of influencers coming in and talking about Polkadot. And now it's, 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 a, it's a mob. You can't pinpoint on one person because it's decentralized. That's why more and more influencers are flocking also. Initially, I think they were scared to kind of come in the public and tell that, okay, I'm gonna do marketing for you. I'm gonna need this much money. But now slowly they are realizing, okay, so-and-so guy is doing, why shouldn't I do? I think it's, it's gonna be kind of like a chain reaction going forward. I would say runtime upgrades uh, that are pushed by Parity and the Fellowship um, that include breaking changes to XCM, uh, not having that be an issue going forward. Um, it causes a lot of delays for a lot of teams, parachain teams and wallet teams, um, and it's just an unnecessary overhead that those teams have to absorb. I think we need just better communication from the fellowship. If you're in the, the Matrix channel, you see people like Basti and Joe uh, asking the fellows, hey, is there anything else you want to include in this release? I think some Somewhere in the pipeline, we need to talk to parachain teams and wallet teams to make sure they're aware of these changes. And also maybe some kind of checklist where the fellowship makes sure parachain to parachain XCMs work and parachain to relay uh, XCMs work as well. But there's another thing as well, uh, as part of Chaos Style, it would be some changes to the delegation system. If I delegate to the Coos, right? but I disagree with how the Coos votes, I should be able to change my vote for that specific referendum and not have to undelegate for that track and mess about like that. That would be a very nice change. And that's just a taste of what will be discussed tomorrow at the Semi-Secret Summit before two days of deep tech presentations and demos at the Sub-Zero Conference. Each day, we'll be filling you in on exactly what happened, so make sure you subscribe and we'll see you on the new show tomorrow.